All right, so 5.5, we're going to talk about building. We're talking about building inverse functions. So mathematically, we have things called inverse operations. So yesterday, we talked about PEMDAS and how we sort of reversed it and started undoing things. So if I'm adding and you guys subtract the same number, it'll undo it. So if I add 5, if I start at 10, and I add 5, it takes me to 15. But if you guys subtract the 5, it brings you right back to that first input. right? So we have inverse operation. Now we can build whole functions that are inverses of another function. The notation is this f to the negative 1 of x. That's what they're telling you there is it's more of a symbol than it is an exponent. So you're not raising f to the negative 1 power and writing the reciprocal, all that kind of stuff. It's just a symbol so that you know and I know it's the inverse. So basically, the first method of building an inverse, let's look at it on this page, is to interchange the x and the y in an equation and solve for the new y. So our x and y will flip-flop, and then we'll solve for y again. Do the opposite of each operation in reverse order, which is kind of a weird one. So what I tend to do on problems like this when they write the function notation is I will start by writing y equals negative 5 plus 4x. The only thing I did there is get rid of the f of x notation for a y equals notation. Now I'll do the exchange. I'm going to make this y and x, and I'm going to make that x a y. So all you do is exchange all the variables. They, they switch. Now when we go and plug or uh, solve this thing for y, we'll end up with our inverse. So solve for y. What's the first thing we should do? What's that? Could, but remember yesterday we talked about reversing PEMDAS. So let's start with the look for things to add or subtract. So let's add 5 on both sides. And up with x plus 5 is equal to 4y. Now, now divide by 4. Now when you divide by 4, um, I'm going to write it like this over here. Because some of you will do it differently. Some of you will say x plus 5 all divided by 4. And some of you will say x divided by 4 plus 5 divided by 4. So you'll divide the whole side by 4 or every term by 4. Either one is OK. Either one is OK. It doesn't matter. Those are your two inverse functions. So at the end, we should really write them as f inverse x plus 5 over 4 or x over 4 plus 5 over 4. Okay. So again, with this one, I would write it as y equals square root of x divided by 5. So what's, after I rewrite it into the y equals notation, what's the first thing we should do? We should switch this to an x, switch that to a y, and now we're ready to solve for y. So what's the first thing we do here? Square root. Square both sides. And I get x squared is equal to y over 5. Right now, my y is being divided by 5, so we're going to multiply both sides by 5. Little chunga chunga there, and I get y equals 5x squared. So negative 1, so f, negative 1 of x is 5x squared. 
So what we're talking about is if you pick a number, let's pick a number that's going to work out nice. Let's pick 21. What's 21? Uh, no, I don't want to do 21 divided by 5. Um, what about 20? So let's go to the original function and put in 20. What's 20 divided by 5? 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. 2. Now take that 2 and bring it over here. What's 2 squared? 4. Times 5. Brings me back to that original 20 that I used as my input. So this next problem it says the formula can divert a temperature in Fahrenheit to Celsius is given by Celsius equals 5 times the Fahrenheit temp minus 32 all divided by 9. So once I was playing a trip to Canada where temperatures are measured in Celsius and the hotel manager was telling me about the nice spring weather I could expect. He said they're expecting highs of 10 degrees Celsius. Find the inverse of the function and use it to convert the Celsius to Fahrenheit. So they're giving me a Celsius temperature, right? So one thing is you could put the Celsius in there and then do all the undoing stuff to figure it out. We're going to just do it the other way to start. We're going to, we're going to find the inverse first. Now, the note says when you are doing quote-unquote real-world applications, do not flip-flop your variables. Don't flip-flop them here because that, that'll mess things up. Okay? The C's become F's and F's become C's. doesn't make sense. So all we're going to do is take that equation, and solve for f. What's the first thing we should do? We'll multiply by 9. Now, I know a lot of you like to take that 5 and distribute. You're so ingrained in distributing the 5 through, but it's multiplication, right? So let's just divide by 5 to get rid of it rather than multiply it. So now you have 9c over 5 equals f minus 32. Last step, add 32 add 32. So what we end up with is f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. So what happens when I plug the 10 in? 10 degrees Celsius goes in for c. So what's 9 fifths times 10? There are different ways. You could do 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 2 times 9 is 18, 18. plus 32 is 50. So 10 degrees Celsius equals 50 degrees Fahrenheit. All right?